Hello everyone. My name is Patrick and I'll be your presenter this afternoon. I'll take you out on the drive in the beautiful uh, um, Juma Game Reserve in the South Eastern South Africa. And uh, Peter Bright will be behind the camera with me this afternoon and uh, uh, Hammond Gabber on final control. So the three of us and will be uh, being uh, such a fantastic draft this afternoon. Afternoon, everyone. It's good to be back from leave. And back to good to be back on the jigger as well. Just bumped action off this afternoon. Uh, thought I'd go out. Obviously, action is uh, out in Dixie preparing for tomorrow's Wallah Lama Sabbath. So I needed some time to organize that. It was a good opportunity for me to join you guys on the game drive. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, find lots of nice things to watch. Oh, they were at Cavalry Dam earlier. Oh, yeah, they were there. It's Cavalry Dam this afternoon. Just gonna pack in some shade here. And uh, just look at this magnificent beast here. The wallaby beast associating with the uh, nice family unit of the water bucks. Brad was just saying now uh, they were. Can you maybe put your head a little bit lower, Patrick? As you're blocking the water box. Thanks. Sure. They were at Gauri Dam this afternoon. It was extremely hot today, yeah? So that's why you'll find lots of uh, um, activities of a different end of species around the watercourses um, in the summer hot days. So coming up, coming out of out of the uh, big bushes to the open spaces, um, with some lovely breeze. Bucks don't actually handle hits the, um, that much um, compared to the other animals because they're very, very hairy antelopes. That's why they are often around the water courses just to um, to get some lovely breeze uh, coming from the water to cool themselves down, as a name implies, and at the same time just to uh, to be able to, to escape from the uh, from the, from the uh, Predators lines, particularly into the water. Just 
this Wallabies Family Unit is the one that we often see um, around Western Gauri um, very often, sometimes over here on the quarantine, Gauri Dam, Befsik Dam, Three House Dam, um, those areas. They move around uh, quite a lot as the unterritorial. Oh, there's a, there's a single zebra standing way in a distance it's between us and Yuri's house. So there must have been lots of activities around Gauri Dam this afternoon, yeah? We're we'll going to check the other dams, Perfect Dam and Treehouse Dam between them, see if there will be any activities this afternoon. But generally, then you'll find lots of um, a huge congregation of a different end of species that's hanging around by the watercourses. We're going to have a very, very hot summer this year again. as it always has been. It's very nice, very, very nice, good start, yeah, Peter? Yeah. <coughs> so we're going to be moving on. Thanks, I'm in a full control. Danielle wants to know why the water box have got that distinctive white circle on the on the bomb. See, many many years ago, this is a very very interesting story. How did the water box actually? Uh, get that distinctive white circle on the bum. The story I've been told by my grandfather many, many years ago that one day the, the old man was painting his toilet and he also painted his toilet seat white. And whatever came in set on the toilet seat while was, the paint was still wet. And uh, he obviously walked off with that. Uh, white round circle on their bum and it never come off. That's beautiful. Stand back from earlier. And um uh, yeah, they aren't very very photogenic stand backs and uh, and the and the dikers. They were small as antelopes in this area. So yeah, Daniel, yeah, they actually said on the on a white way to sit, and then obviously the, uh, the the passing pass it on to what one generation to another. I'm just gonna go through the deep end, and I'll finish off the story. Wow, the water box have got that white circle on the bum. It was a water pump running, pumping water from the other ground to you either to Yuri's house or Inga's house or even to the camp that, that, that's, that's the water that we also drink at uh, World Life Camp coming from that uh, from that pump anyway uh, just to come back to this uh, to the subject of how did the water bath get that circle 
that's what we we call the following mechanism or follow me sign that the uh, that the, the youngsters are able to follow the mother or each other while running through the thick bushes along grass in the uh, in the wet season escaping from the predators so that's follow me sign basically or following mechanism it's called the other people call it a a shooting target because that it looks precisely as a shooting target so if you feel like uh, doing a shooting practice uh, that is you better find yourself a water buck and uh, and see if you can hit the target or how accurate you are following mechanism so most of the antlop species they've got other white yeah it's, it's actually it's all white let's, let's try <coughs> go around this road just a uh, change of route plan I'm just gonna do Shibama road and uh, and then down towards the twin dam that's the area where the, the six part was located this morning and it was left uh, just on the south side of the dam and uh, also Kurila was also left pretty much in the same vicinity this morning so we're gonna go oh the chopper behind us making a probably looking for you Patrick probably looking for <laughs> us yeah <laughs> <laughs> now just saying that most of the antlop species have got other white behind the ears on on the bum or on the tip of the tails that they use as a following mechanism. Giraffes have got white markings behind the ears. Water box is a distinctive white circle on the bum. Kudus, white underneath the tails. And, and in the cat species, lions have got the black markings behind the ears as well. And uh, the black on the uh, on the tail tip, leopards have got black on behind the ears. and and the white on the tail tip so that's that and that therefore the resins are those markings as I said there's follow mechanisms and also for communication mechanisms see lines when they they communicate uh, with the body language if you see the flicking that ears or a tail just telling you this must time to move on or stretching that's also a body sign communication so, which is very interesting so the impulse have got M three black bands on the hind quarters as well that looks like M that stands for McDonald's of the bush Sure, all of you guys know about the black bands that stands for the McDonald's of the British because everyone pretty much is the Impala. But the Impala is that for, for, for the two different reasons. Following mechanisms, communication as well as actually i say two it must, must be three actually and also to, to to confuse the predators if you find a whole bunch of impala standing close to each other and it's very, very difficult for a for a, a predator to single one out and i've seen this happening with, with lapids and lines lapids will will stand and stare at them for for a long period of time because it doesn't actually know which one to go for because they, they all look like a single unit. Same as the zebras having the shadow stripes to blend in so well and also to confuse the predators. They 
all look like a single unit, just like the, the people on the vehicle. If we sit very, if we sit absolutely still in the vehicle, it is very, very hard for an animal to actually identify or to recognize us as, as human beings in the vehicles. We, we all look like the part of the vehicle. But immediately you make a sudden movement and then they would go out and pick it up. That's when they tend to react relatively aggressive towards the vehicle, charging the vehicle and that sort of thing. So we're still approaching a few hours dam. Just gonna maybe the, the lines. Uh, Slipping in the in the drainage line here somewhere in, in some shade, where it's still fairly hot for the predators to be actually moving around, even humans or any animal living in in this environment, and, uh, and then again in this kind of a, a climate, so there's not much activities. Ah, I just got a fight there, Patrick, because I just looked past you to the to the dials in front. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. almost the temperature. <laughs> ah, is it? Okay. <laughs> the temperature is okay. There's no overheating. Like no, that's fine, oh, no. that's show sure gauge, you know. <laughs> and in fact, Peter, I mean, F stands for finish yeah. and an E for energy. <laughs> so, it's almost finished. We're, yeah, we're running out of fuel as well, so we're going to have to walk home carrying all this heavy stuff on the Jigger. Or to get him and out in the Babalu to come and tow us back home or bring us some fuel, just one of the two things. But he doesn't know how to drive, that's a thing. And again, his lances, and then again, Hammond's lances is, is invalid at this stage. <laughs> Thanks, Hammond, by the way. You know, the squirrel's going crazy somewhere. Oh, here we go. Here's a lion right here. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Lying up here in some shade. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. There's, there's at least three or four. Yeah. The whole pride. Yeah. The whole pride. <laughs> um, that's why the squirrels are going crazy. So we stopped to look at the squirrel and the lance are just lying up just the opposite side. What kind of guy are you? I don't think you see the pipe <laughs> lying close to the road. <laughs> yeah. So what kind of a tracker are you, Peter? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tracker. I've got a blind tracker this afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Four, four eyed tracker. <laughs> oh, what a sight. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Squirrel. Yeah, very, very alert squirrels. I mean, they often help us to find animals, especially the predators. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, go. eight, nine, I think. Oh, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I counted eight. Let's see if we can. Wow. This is exactly what they meant earlier that the cats will be lying up in some shades um, by this time of the day. It's still <coughs> nice and hot over here in the Jimmy Game Reserve, South Africa. So this is Tech's Pride. It's, it's nice to see them in a nice open space. You counted eight, Peter? Yeah, You, you counted correct. nine, eh? No, eight is correct. That's eight, yeah.
In a very good condition. Yeah? Mm. Sticks pride and the, the youngsters are growing up relatively faster. We've seen them for quite some time. Yeah? They move around a lot. We've just been hearing on the radio that they were exported in, in the, in the uh, western sectors, Mambila, other trees at the area, um, Chima Beach Lodge, Inkura, Malamala, and those areas. Yes. So they move, move around a lot. They don't have any limitation. Um, relative to the, to the other part of lines in the side sand because they are related to Mapoko Mal, so they don't have any problem in terms of um, territorial movement. We have been seen for uh, quite a number of um, occasions uh, with the Mapoko Mal, especially uh, the Kinky Tars and Mr. T, that's just the other characters that we've been seeing for a long time. Since they left the area after killing the uh, the buffalo, as far as I can remember. Maybe they were seen while I was on leave, but uh, not that I know of. All flat care at the moment. That's a typical lion's behavior. Especially when the when the time is full, was spend the whole day sleeping and do nothing unless if something comes by and and draw the uh, the attention. Oh yeah, go ahead, Hammond. Thanks, Simon. The final control. Just a question from Didis. If I got uh, the spelling right or the pronunciation right. Anyway, did. Do the lions have uh, um, specific uh, breeding seasons or do they have offspring all year round? Yeah, certainly the uh, lions uh, yeah, have offspring all year round, they've got no fixed breeding season. Just most of the antelope species that have got a fixed breeding season. So generally, they uh, they breed in winter and give birth in summer when there's lots of um, water and food availability, which is completely different um, to the cats because the um, the uh, they stay with the with the offspring for for a very very long time. With lines. Particularly, they, they tend to stay with the with the offspring for for a very, very long time, relatively to to the other uh, cat species. Yeah. About two and a half years to three years. Uh, that's lions. That's when they will uh, abandon uh, the offsprings. And leopards, they can abandon the cubs at at, uh, at at any age of less than a year um, to two to two and a half years as well. So it just vary from species to species, and again, um, and an environment um, as well. So in a very, very stressful environment where there's a lot of competition, um, if I talk if I talk of the competition, I'm, I'm just uh, referring to the high density of the of the cat species in the area. So that is a stressful environment where cats have to stay with, with their offsprings for a long time and, until they are sure that they will be able to, to survive on their own.
stay away from the danger. But again, it's still t- it, it, it's, it will take them uh, two and a half years or two years after, after they've been abandoned to establish their own territory. Which most of the... Nine in total, right? There were nine, but yeah, another eight. Yeah. I think it happened with. Wasn't it the Mapojos that caused some havoc or something? I don't know. I think it happened just before my leave, and then just after that, suddenly one was seen on the on the east side of, of, of our uh, yes, area, yeah. while the others were somewhere else. But yeah, given that there's still eight here, probably yeah. hasn't come back yet. Yeah. How many females and males are here, Patrick? As far as you can see. I um, mean the adults. There's three lionesses and one lioness, one youngster, young female. This one's also. This is a young male over here. Mm-hmm. This, this to the right of, the, of this one lying up here. If the head's to the right and then and the tail to no, no, the head to the left and then the tail to the left. It's also female and the other one. It's difficult to see. Uh, this is definitely young male here, just to our right here. Mm. See on the far right here. You see, you can see that uh, like a small man mm. um, developing there. Because the uh, the youngsters, the young male, um, start developing the man at the age of about 18 months, 17 months, there about. Just almost here. Um, two years of age. Well, just a question uh, question here from Burl and wants to know if the if that that youngster that was separated is it still missing or not? And that was actually a female, yeah? I'm not it, sure. It was a lioness cub here because I found it on um, just south of Mama Road. More than a week ago, mm. and yeah, it was definitely a female, and she was still by herself. Well, I think yeah, that 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 lioness cub is still missing eh, because uh, um, as far as I know, the stick sprite it's nine individuals in total, and over here we've got eight. So I think it's it is still missing. Yeah. It's not it's not here. Why would it be, Patrick? If if obviously they got separated, but. They're still pretty close for all this time that they, they won't like regroup or something like that. What, what could... Would it be because the pride doesn't let them back or is she decided to no, make off on her own? Or? No, but it's, it's for, for that uh, age of, of the lioness cub uh, wouldn't be on its own. Um, I, I think it's, it's still trying to uh, to, to like get the, the rest of the pride. I think that the lionesses are also making efforts to uh, to get it back into the pride. Mm. So the, the, the just um, not communicating well uh, to be able to locate each, each other. So I'm um, sure she will eventually um, um, find them, yeah, I suppose. Because it's, it's, it's just very unusual for, for, for a lioness cub at that age to, to be uh, on its own, but the chance to survive are very slim. Mm. In terms of hiding, it's still a, an inexperienced um, youngster that wouldn't be able to um, to sustain itself. So it is a pity, actually. So if, she, if he doesn't, yeah, but I mean, the, the chances to survive are very slim. Yeah. Maybe she should. Yeah, go. Okay, copy. What time is it now, Tom? Seven. Seven. 
Okay, wind up for thanks. I think if 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 the uh, if the lionesses um, have been contact calling constantly, um, uh, they will have find the youngster um, a while ago. So I, I don't know if the uh, it is just very very difficult to, to predict it uh, um, whether they are making efforts in, to uh, to relocate the uh, uh, the baby. But that's the only way the lions um, are able to, to locate each other is by counted calling, roaring, and, and the scent marking and that sort of thing. That's how they communicate. I don't think they'll go anywhere for now because it's still hot, so they're just going to sleep there. Just keep losing my my secret call. My earpiece. <laughs> <laughs> and just to let everybody know that uh, that we will be uh, having a night drive at 7 o'clock. It's starting at 7 o'clock uh, this evening just after the, the evening drive so it'd be nice just to come and follow or stay with this with the stick sprite as long as you can hopefully they'll get up and hunt so uh, we'll follow them hunting so that it, it will really be a, a very, very interesting experience just to follow this the part of lions hunting um, throughout the night See them in on action at least, uh, other than seeing them <laughs> flat cat like this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're actually waiting for the wind to create some movement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll have brought some bull tongues, throw, throw them, throw the, some bull tongues to them to, to get a reaction out of them. And I'm a ranger has done that while I was a tracker many years ago, but we didn't have guest on board unfortunately there was just uh, this stuff drive and they were sitting on the bonnet and uh, and there were the two male lines lying up and then they had a um, uh, beef bell tongues dry beef bell tongues and uh, he just took one and three to the line right in front of me the line got up and looked at me the line obviously thought that was me trying to get a reaction out of it <laughs> and just look, look at me like this with a big orange ass and, <laughs> and I just sat dead still on the uh, on the tractor seat and, but yeah they were obviously used to vehicles and humans so they just look at me for a, for a few minutes and then just boof lie down again flat cat and again I mean Animals will not necessarily charge you unless if you corner it or surprise it. But if they're lying down like that in the open spaces, they've got escape route, and if I, if I jump off the vehicle and walk towards them, they'll probably growl at me and then, and then take off. After my bow stations, um, we've just located on the sticks in Dala here, uh, lying up uh, by uh, um, 
three hours dam, so the best, best approach would be uh, from the south inside of the dam itself. So Kurila was also here this morning, was lying up on the dam all here. Must have moved off because of the the presence of this of the lines here in the vicinity here. The lines lines of lepers that don't get along with each other. Very very competitive predators. Lions and leopard um, and hyenas are the uh, the biggest enemies. We call them the super predators, the hyenas and lions. If I remain silent, I'm just expecting questions. It's all going crazy here, just the south of us here. So it's been going crazy since this morning, uh, I suppose. The magnificent creatures, the lions, the king of the beast. But how could someone think of destroying these magnificent creatures?
Okay, the water holes create a very good hunting opportunities of the of the uh, of the predators because they know that the the ant species will come down to drink water during the course of day or uh, or before the sun set beyond the mountains. So you find the leopards ambushing on the well-worn game paths. Um, this by the water courses, just to try and sneak up onto the prey by a of surprise. Very patient hunters relative to the lions. The lions, they often spoil the hunts just, just by exposing themselves, especially the inexperienced lions, the youngsters. So they often spoil the uh, Spoil the parents' hands. Uh, Abs confirm, are you talking to me? Yeah, affirmative. Um, yeah, you're more than welcome to join. Um, it's just one vehicle present at the moment. Okay, I'll cover that. Thanks. Yeah, if I'm, yeah, as soon as uh, apps pulls into uh, sighting, then I'll be uh, pulling out. Okay, I'll copy. Thanks. The two uh, Juma Kim Ralph vehicles responding to the sighting, yeah. And as soon as one vehicle arrives here, you know, we will uh, make space available for them. You can always come back here. And again, we've got night drive tonight, so I don't think the lines will go anywhere until dark. And we'll be able to follow them hunting or doing some other activities tonight. Yeah, she gets up. Move into some shade. Hello. 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 How are you? Good.
Um, just put uh, Philmon Supra come slow down along uh, Philmon Cutler. Yeah, I think the bird just come along over here. Because the down land and coming from the southern side of the dam. Uh, take a copy, sir. I'll go along to the side. Just cows enjoy. It's bumpy over here. Come, Fungwe. Thanks all the all of the questions, uh, Hammond and Fall Control, this afternoon. Unfortunately, we had to pull out of the sighting, as I say, that, that uh, the couple of uh, um, camera vehicles respond to sighting. As we pull out in the fifth vehicle, we're just pulling in there, and we had to, to make space available uh, for the camera vehicle. We pop in and have a look as well. going to listen for the updates on the radio if the uh, if there's a gap there or if there's another game drive vehicle if there's a gap there then yeah we can always go back I've left two vehicles in the position of uh, three hours then. We must still like no change. Elephant Skull Road. I haven't driven this road here for a long time actually. It's called the Elephant Skull Road. It's Kudu Road. Yeah, it's Kudu Road with some Kudus over here. <laughs> it's a young. It's actually an adult Kudu car. Uh, 
Allah kiri hu. What are you looking at? It's looking at something else, but he is facing in the direction where she is uh, looking. Maybe you can realize in the area. Maybe three house dam is not far from here. She could have moved down um, in this drainage line here, possibly. It's very hard to say. Because this is an ideal habitat of the leopards. Where the uh, will chill out. Um, during the course of the day, especially when the temperature is extremely high. Come let us know what what you're actually staring at could you? Nah, nothing is <coughs> nothing serious, this is just uh, curious. So if it was uh, a pretty in the ear and then she will have uh, given an alarm calling, a barking bah! Wow. Just to uh, notify the other individuals to be aware of the danger in the, in the vicinity. But she. Uh, it's quite a big couple. It is, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's a fairly large family. Signal might get bad on this road. Try and go through here, and uh, I will uh, get back to the uh, the questions. Looking for uh, the magnificent creatures that we are. Basically sharing the land with them, but how nice is that to share the environment with the, with the wildlife, just like in the Maasai Mara Kenya. That's how it used to be of here many years ago, just before the fences were put up. Anyway, I'm not going to delve into deep details about it. So we're just going to go and check between there. I'm just gonna th go through one bad signal pitch and uh, and I will respond to questions. We should check this riverbed here. And the signal sometimes is quite bad, but it might be way for checking this riverbed here. is the, as I said, an ideal habitat of the leopards. Maybe you can realize not far away from uh, three hours there itself. Probably lying somewhere, or sitting up somewhere, just keeping an eye open on those lines. It's a very beautiful sight. Eh? I could build my fertility camp here. block uh -huh. in the middle of nowhere oh we have to go all the way back again <laughs> wow The 
it's obviously from the Elish mm -hmm. elephant. Pushed, just pushed a tree down across the road. out of the bad signal patches so, but we had to double back because of the tree that has been pushed down by elephant across the road and we just couldn't go around the tree because lying right across the road there is no space to sneak through Sometimes the elephant do that on purpose, just to make, make us work. Road maintenance, push clearing. Let's try this side of the tree there. Okay, the first question was from Jackie, and the Jackie wants to know if the lines have developed have developed the the tolerance not to react aggressively towards the vehicle and like this after the stick sprout and we were pretty close to the stick sprout and there was no Aggression re um, reaction at all. So just flat gate completely unconcerned about our presence and other vehicles' presence. So have the animals uh, became accustomed for over the years just from seeing the vehicle? every day in the lives. No, certainly that, that, that is correct, um, Jiggy. So animals have, are very well accustomed to, to the vehicles and humans. That's why they... Or they don't... Sometimes they do. It, 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 it basically depends on the situation, but they are, they say, they are certainly used to, uh, to the presence of vehicles. So that's why they, they don't react relatively aggressive towards the vehicle or humans, even because so we sometimes do a lot of tracking and we, uh, we find them in food and they don't uh, react aggressive towards us. And as, as I said here, and if you corner the animal or surprise it, it will obviously be a different um, scenario. But other than that, they are, they are completely well accustomed to the vehicles. as they, they, They've grown up seeing the vehicles as, as, the, as you asked, so if they've developed a the tolerance. Yeah, surely the head. Just gonna go through this deep, yeah. So the the presence of the vehicle doesn't actually present a threat. Towards them at all. As long as you stay calm and and uh, and static on the vehicle, then you'll be fine. But if you make sudden movement in as when the animals will will react relatively aggressive towards the vehicle. But other than that, I mean they, they're cold with us being there close to them.
But the habitu habituation process took many, many years. It's not easy to to habituate any an animal. Apart from the giraffe, you know, the giraffes are very, very inquisitive animals. So they're probably the easiest animals to, to get them used to the vehicles, even humans on foot. And we had a very, very big male giraffe bull in the Kruger National Park. We used to call him Floppy Ears because his ears was really floppy and it was a very old bull giraffe. And it was very, very well accustomed to the, to the people and food. I mean, I've walked. Um, literally to him and then he just stood still and looked at, look at me he just didn't move at all so they do develop the tolerance for the, over a, a period of time And uh, leopards are, the, are very, very difficult animals to, to habituate them because they're very, very solitary animal. Rhinos also are very, very, very difficult animals to, to actually. Oops, sorry, get up. That's a very big bomb here. I nearly uh, lost my cameraman behind me. <laughs> when I saw it coming, I braced myself. <laughs> I hope I answer your question, um, Jaggy. The second question was from uh, Petty. Um, let me just quickly ask him and to remind me what was the question again. I just can't remember. I've been talking and talking non-stop. That's not good. Okay, thanks, I mean, thanks, Betty, uh, for the question. The PD wants to know, I'm just going to make the question short and concise. The PD wants to know, sweet and concise, wants to know what will threaten those lionesses referring to the stick sprite or stick lionesses um, but other than the other lines the obviously humans if you if you're out in out in fruiting and you will, you will obviously fit in them as I said earlier, that they wouldn't get up and charge you unnecessarily, depending on the situation. Like when, when the when the cups were pretty small, or um, the mating lines, or the lines from the kills. So that is this is a completely different scenario. This is where the lines or any predator will uh, react relatively aggressive. Um, Towards you, but other than that, I mean, yeah, the, the way they're lying up in the open spaces, and then if, if you come across them, you're gonna uh, growl at you and then get up and and, uh, and move off. So yeah, to, to be humans or rhino, elephant, they're also feeding them. Lions, lions and elephants are also not very good friends at all. They, they don't get along at all. Let line, um, elephants will chase the lines off the curls, I've seen it. 
and they'll also risk Q. Um, the prey species from the danger. Same as that as the hippopotamus in the water um, rescue the uh, the prey species from the crocodiles or from the enemy. Um, yeah. I wanted to say something but uh, in addition to that but uh, it's just uh, go away it went out of my mind but it will come back oh yes this is the uh, oh, just got back just like that when I say that the lions and an elephant don't get along with each other, it reminds me of uh, an incident that had happened uh, in the southern part of the Sabi Sand uh, several years ago, where the uh, the pride of lions was uh, feeding off the kudu. If I'm not mistaken, yeah, I think it was a cutie or something. Anyway, and the three elephant bulls that just pop out of nowhere. And it was a game drive vehicle uh, at the sighting, and the elephants just, just weren't me. I think they obviously uh, pick up the, uh, the smell of the tokus. And, the, the, and that made him crazy and because of what they did and they tried they tried to chase those lions off the kill and the lions didn't want to leave the kill because they, they worked very very hard to uh, to make the kill and uh, what the lions did and they, they uh, ran around the vehicle in the circle they ran around 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 the vehicle trying to protect themselves from these uh, young elephant bulls and eventually the, the elephants uh, got upset and decided to, to flip the vehicle over. But fortunately there was no one seriously injured in the incident. And the tracker managed to, to, to drive this above lines and, and, and elephants away from the uh, from the vehicle where the guests were just lying on the ground so elephants and lions don't get along with each other at all in any circumstances not even if they kill even if the water courses or wherever they they come across them it is always a war Because the only reason is because it's, it's a competition between the heavy voice and the, and the kinny voice. Because when when the elephant dies, then obviously the, the, the lions will eat it, will eat the carcass, and the elephant wouldn't eat the lion's carcass. And also the lions will try and and prey upon the elephant babies if they could get the chance but the chances are very very slim because the, the mothers are very very protective um, uh, over to the youngsters I mean, even the elephant cow gives birth to, uh, to the little one and, and dies like sometimes it happens that the, uh, the elephant uh, gives birth to, to a premature calf and dies. 
what happens in the Manuleti Reserve a couple of years ago, elephants gave birth to premature calf and just did not leave the dead calf for, for a couple of days. And just couldn't eat. It was actually morning. And we wouldn't allow anything to, to get anywhere closer to the baby. And I've also seen that with the rhino and the sabi sand. But it was not a premature calf. It, 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 it is um, caught in the fire that went out of control. So what it did when they, they did a back bend, there was a, a little rhino calf. In the block there where they did a back bend and obviously get caught in the fire and died in the incident. And the mother was very, very sad. We didn't want to see that. It was absolutely awful. And she, she just hung by the calf for a week. And there was a part of lions that was also hanging around there to, um, to eat the little one. The mother just did not want to, or just just couldn't leave. It was awful. But eventually, when she had to leave it because she wanted to eat, and then that's when the lions got the chance to to eat the uh, the baby, the toasted baby rhino. It was very sad. Just gonna remain quiet for a few seconds. If there'll be any questions. <laughs> that make me laugh. Uh, a lot of them, and, and now I've got a, an evil laugh. So we're just on Chita Cut Line at the moment, heading north towards the uh, Bethlehem Cut Line, and we're gonna head down towards Bethlehem Dam. Check the area and uh, already there's been done uh, since I've been talking and we're just going to quickly ask for update. It's for the last 10 15 minutes or so, or if there's any space, just at that uh, position of. Uh, she housed them and then we will go and, and have a look again. If we don't find anything interesting, so we'll definitely be, definitely gonna return to three house them. <laughs> and stay with that stick sprite as long as we as we can. What is done? Oh, the game drive vehicle.
Anything that you like to see this afternoon, apart from the lines that we have already seen, sometimes it's nice to challenge the, the people. Challenge your guest. Say so today we would like to see an elephant or a see a kill and that sort of thing. Even if it's not possible but just to to say, but you never know. People have got different imaginations or predictions and that sort of thing. Or feelings. This dam looks quiet at the moment. So we often find the elephants at this dam here. So they seem to have disappeared. Just on holiday at the moment, the Ellis. Apparently, there's one elephant on the Cheddar Cart Line. Something at the dam. Oh, Nyala, I mean, in Pala. There's also some buffers feed there, but you, know, you, can, you, you could barely see them. There's lots of trees in the way. The 
Dara boys. Could be the same the bachelor unit that we often find just lying up in the water here at the Buffalo Ship Dam. Oh, look at all the therapies here, uh, Peter. So the little, uh, little um, heads or noses that's uh, sticking up on the surface of the water to take a nice fresh breath. Hmm, how is that? The fresh water turtles. We didn't get a salt water turtles here because they don't have a salt water, some of the fresh water from the rain. If you get you get a salt water in the sea. Not over here. In the side of the sand or the lower fault. You'll often see them just uh, sitting up on the hippos and bufflers just uh, eating the ticks or the external parasites of the skin. That's one of the reasons why you'll find the, the buffalo just lying up in the shallow water during the day. Because they want the therapists to, to actually eat the ticks off the skin, stand them up. And at the same time just to, just to cool off in the water. These are terrapins floating on the surface of the, of the water, waiting for them some buffers. I'm sure they, they were here um, during the course of the day. You can see that the chucks on the, just on the, uh, um, on the edge of the water. It's a gorgeous afternoon in the Sabi Sands, Greater Trigger National Park. Okay, we're going to be moving along. Buffalo disappeared in the fixed stuff here just to. Uh, just south of the dam. Look at that buffalo guy. You could have moved down to deep here just to, to your right here. Oh, there, there he is in the distance, but uh, as I said earlier, and that Cold, barely see them because the uh, right in the thick stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, there's a few more, yeah. Uh, another too far. Never mind. You see them. Other drives. I often see them here. The Daga boys in the Western Gauri. Um, station uh, at Bengala Lock. Of uh, the few hours down coming this. Sorry, Petru, what do you say again? 
Open lock. Open lock means there is no one at the at the site. So it's free. The doors are open. You can pop in whenever you like. So yeah, we'll be making our way slowly towards three house deck. Look at those lines again. There's no one there apparently. We've, we've checked the uh, just the eastern side of Western Dari and there's dead quietly. So yeah, we're gonna return to the to the lines. Just see if they can see if they will give us any actions. Tonight it will be a very interesting just to see or follow them doing something. Uh, I'm just inviting everybody or as many as many a few people to enjoy the, the night drive tonight. Every drive is co it's a completely a different experience because you, know, you see something different. So going going out in the in the dark, and, uh, and, uh, you never know what you're going to see. And I've, I've done many many get uh, night drives. Captain Hammond Geber and power control is afternoon. Watch is behind. Yeah, it is behind. <laughs> Minus three minutes to five. Good afternoon, uh, Annette. Can't even remember my name. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It has been a long time, yeah. Where are you? I'm in, just in the middle of nowhere, just behind uh, uh, the steering wheel of my vehicle. And uh, where are you? I want to approach you <laughs> okay, wonderful. I'm just on uh, 
um, Nyala Road south, um, heading south towards the Spaghetti Crossing at the moment. Okay, you're not just in Bolas. No, not yet. I mean, I've been there earlier. Um, I'm just slowly making my way uh, back to the Galas, yeah. But you're yeah, more than welcome to uh, to go the first before me, but I'll probably uh, take a short break before. Oh, okay, no problem. I'll put you with the No, uh, apparently it's up in lock at the moment. Um, so, yeah. You're more than welcome to go there, yeah. Thanks, I mean, I found a controller was just on, on the radio of uh, the game drive vehicles out there this afternoon. And just a uh, from Sharon. Um, Sharon wants to know if the Terrapins, or where do they lay their eggs? Do they lay their eggs in the water on land? And then, and what type of soil do they, do slacks and turtles lay their eggs? Only frogs that lay the eggs, um, the toads, or the, and the other frog species that lay the eggs in the water, on the, on the surface of the water, you can see like the strings or the, the clusters of eggs just on the surface of the water. But toads can, because toads can live on land, but they can also lay their eggs just um, um, on the side of the water. But yeah, just to just to come back to to the uh, to the real question itself, the, yeah, they lay the eggs um, on land, not in the water, just just the, uh, just on the on the edge of the water, on the soft sand, and uh, and they also lay the eggs on the soft sand, like um, uh, not a very hard hard soil or. Um, the granite soil and then it, it, it's it's a very soft sand like a salt soil that's where they actually lay their eggs snakes and uh, turtles not a very hard soil obviously because uh, they have to be able to to dig up and bury their eggs and uh, also they uh, they need the sunlight to, uh, to incubate the eggs with them so that's why they don't need a, a very hard dry soil to to, uh, to actually lay the eggs so it, it has to be a very soft soil or sand Hello, 
Alrighty, um, we're going to be taking a short break and, uh, and we will be back just after 10 minutes time and then just enjoy Gary Dam in the meantime and we'll see you in about 10 minutes time. Thanks very much. I think we might be live. The radio broke up, but I think we're live. Yeah. Yeah, All righty, we're about after a short break. Hey, go! Go, 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 go! go. And that's a uh, perfect volume. I think um, I'm here at the corner at the dam. And just in the road, I don't know which road, there's an English sitting in the road next to them. I got a couple of just confirm on and off inside of the uh, of the dam or the Galit Sea for uh, which direction is. The Inga lying up. So the southern south, south of the dam, and the Inga is here about, I don't know, 50 meters from the line. Okay, cool. Okay, copy. So the first approach to the, uh, to the left bit, or Inga, uh, will be uh, uh, from the, uh, the position of the Inga. Okay. I don't think the Inga is here. Good news. Uh, uh, the Kurila it is pretty much in the same vicinity um, as the lines. It's very close to the line, so we're gonna go and take a look. So we are probably about 100 meters away to a three house there, and the lines are still flat kept in the same position. We left in later this afternoon. So, wow, there's lots of things happening in the Western Gallery this morning and afternoon, yeah. It's very really interesting. And Sharon also asked me, thanks very much, Amen. Um, you were bringing up a bit, but my uh, colleague here, Peter Bratt, um, managed to, to read what you said. And Sharon wants me to show them the type of soil where the snakes and tortoises or turtles lay the eggs so I will do so and I'm just gonna we're just gonna quickly go and and have a look at this leopard here in the Ingwe. oh there's a leopard no this is not gorilla oh beautiful light 
Bye, thank you, man. Uh, can could you move to the my head, head? Yeah. So can someone just help us with the uh, ID, please? Thank you so much. Trying to climb. Let me see. Mm -hmm. Nah, this is a female actually. So I might be wrong. How's it? Really, yeah. Mm. One of the lepers in the side be saying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> huh? I did say thank you. I didn't hear me. I said thanks or night. <laughs> thanks very much, by the way. This is lovely, yeah. Thanks for nature legend. Tingani or Taka, one of the two. Yeah, you wanna go through? There's a uh, two vehicle uh, prison uh, in this position of uh, three house dam at the moment. Uh, the inward mobile south away from uh, three house dam at the moment. Uh, I'll keep everyone posted. Yeah, that is um, coming along the main to the inward. Just uh, pushing the one in now. Okay, keep, yeah, yeah. keep coming text here. Yeah. I'll try and stay with his animal. Uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated. Okay, so there's a pin. Uh, Three in a very thick staff over here. Um, we'll try and stay for as long as we can uh, for the other game drive vehicles to also get to see it. Sega, um, text, uh, but it's not 
fun tech that the class are lurking and uh, I don't know, I'll let you know. I'm just actually moving through the fifth staff here at the moment. So, yeah, just keep, just keep coming. Yeah. Yeah, the best approach would be uh, Shibama Road. Remember where we um, where we followed Saseka the, the other day and she eventually made the Bamba. So we're pretty much in the same vicinity, but, this, but she's heading west, just parallel to that road, that right from Shibama Road. Uh, to three hours dam, just from the south inside, yeah. Okay, copy, just try and quit food, yeah. Thanks, Hemen. Yeah, that's, um, I also agree that this is this is Sasega. You can also tell just by her her behaviour. So. Yeah. Sasega. Tingana is much more relaxed than Sasega. All the other sisters. But uh, Tingana was on was on a Daika kill yesterday. Yesterday morning and the Rex went to went to have a look and then she was in there. She, she, she must have left last night. Of the finishing off on that diker um, curl. See, she was probably going to, to drink water three hours down there, but unfortunately, the, the, the big cat's still lying up there by the dam, so she couldn't get to, to drink the water, unfortunately. What a magnificent kit. I'm gonna have a spectacular, spectacular sun seat at the same time as well. Sniffing something on the ground there. Probably a poo. Or the scent of of the other leopard in the area, probably the, the Mara or Tingani. Dachshund coming? It looks like he's eating something. Uh... Just sniffing something. Um, what's your position, huh? Just that government that. Uh... Did the car turn off? Okay, copy. Um, I think uh, I got the audio of your vehicle just keep coming. Um, yeah, I'm just about a couple of hundred meters um, east of here. Just keep that coming down that road that goes to uh, uh, three hours there. Okay, Going a little bit forward. Let's see what she's. Uh, oh, there we go. Mm. She's beautiful.
you guys. Set mark. If she crosses the road here to the north here, I don't think we'll be able to, to follow her because it's very, very thick here. on that game path. The kids love walking on the game path because it's it's much easier for them to walk on the road than walking through the bushes. I think it's a psycho text. She's stuck in the game drive vehicle. Thanks, it's all yours. She's heading into fixed after. It's very, very an impenetrable. So we're gonna be living in peace on the couple hands of Texan, one of the knowledgeable ranger here in the Juma Game Reserve. So I think we had a Very good uh, view of here, and there we are. Uh, we'll be making our way back to the lines. It's cutting off nicely now. So let's see what the lines will uh, will do. It was very nice. Huh? Very nice to see. It's Different, different leopards in the area instead of seeing the same leopard every day. Uh, Nets coming. Hey boy. Uh, do you mind if I join you there? No problem. Wonderful. Thanks very much for the leopard. It was absolutely fantastic. No problem.
was here on, on a day mall this morning and these lines were over here and yeah so far so good <laughs> Foreground, work harder, work harder. Just looking for a place to rest, to rest for a night. Hmm. I've been here. this kept that dove singing for a for quite a while. It's nice to hear it singing. Such a beautiful song of the African bushveld. Work harder, work harder. Or drink lager, drink lager. In the morning, it sings, it sings uh, work harder, work harder. In the afternoon, like this time of the evening, just before the sun sets, it sings drink lager, drink lager. And ours called lager beer. What a life. Back to six pride, there's still not much change at all, still a very flat key, the same position. It looks like they've been lying up here since this morning. That one stretching me at the back. It's time to wake up. And then playing. For the hunting tonight. one hasn't lost its sports yet. If you look on the on the uh, on the front legs and the back legs you can see a little sports. It's the uh, the lose the sports at the age of about two and a half to two uh, to uh, Two years to two and a half years. Leopard um, lines. Still finger of that leopard. <laughs> Just getting myself confused. I'm very excited this afternoon. 
it has been a, such a spectacular drive once again. Gorilla may be nearby as well, it, it's never now. When, when I need first uh, um, called, called, called it a leopard sighting in here, I thought it was Gorilla because she was, uh, she was here by three hours dam this morning. And I, I just I had an impression that, that uh, it was Gorilla, but it was obviously not Gorilla, it was a seca. The first little doubter. The lions are probably the laziest creatures in the in the African bush. They sleep many, many hours a day and do nothing. And some other people say the lions can sleep about 18 out of 24 hours a day. a very really long time. Just conserving energy. And the reason why they, they sleep many many hours a day and conserving energy is because of their very low success rate in terms of hunting. You know that you're not a very successful hunter and you got to conserve energy. So to be able to cover large area to uh, to be able to find food. Survival of the fittest. That's why many many lions die of starvation, even the adult uh, lions who For the youngsters that have just been abandoned from the pride. So one lying down on the left hand side looks like the youngest.
the youngest cub in this pride. So they vary in size, obviously. Ekram, Ekram coming to you. Man, can you please just repeat the question for me? But uh, my earpiece was off my ear. Just breaking up a bit. Yeah. been a long day, sleeping and doing nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can get very tired from sleeping. Eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, look at that again. There's a question from Lynn. Um, the rate is bringing up a bit. The thing she wants to know how many individual lines in the stick spider here, and uh, will that missing cup be able to to rejoin the pride? Uh, we've got eight individuals here, so it's nine individuals in total, that, that's it's including the, the missing one, which is it's, it's not, uh, which hasn't joined the, um, or rejoined the, the Pride yet, so it's still out somewhere and then there hasn't been any report since uh, it was last seen um, uh, in the east. I think the last update on that missing cub was in Chita Chitra. That's probably about a week ago, or a week and a half ago, and since then uh, we haven't had any updates um, on that missing carb, yeah. So yeah, I think yeah, the, the, uh, she may eventually um, find the carb, depending on, on the communication. If they communicate very well, and then she will obviously find the carb, and also it also depends on the um, um, on the distance, uh, if it's too far away from the cup, even if the, the, the contact current is very, very low, 
very low uh, frequency, but what you can actually hear them contact calling each other, but they have to rule to, to be able to, um, to locate each other, because rolling will obviously um, travel long distances, um, and it can travel about 10 kilometers depending on the, on the, um, on the surrounding ground or the terrain, and again, the, uh, the speed and the, the wind direction, yeah. So it's just very, very difficult to, to say at the moment, but yeah, the, the chances of fighting with each other are, are very, very high, especially in this area because we have a very low density of lines. So, um, so it may eventually um, find them. But the other problem with the sticks spots, as I said earlier, I mean, the, they've got such a very, very huge territory, so they move around a lot. So they can travel as, as far as down south to Malamala, Lunda Lose, Singita, Ottawa, uh, in the, in the western sector of the Sabisen, Urusawa, Dulin, that area. So that, that, is, that is my biggest concern. So it may, it may die of the versions because obviously he it, it doesn't have a very good hunting skills and techniques. So we we'll just, just cross our fingers and we we'll wish to find each other. So they aren't very full, yeah, so they probably will hunt tonight. And we're stacking some impalas this morning. That's pride.
Yawning a lot here. This is much better than driving around and see nothing. It's just a pity that it's just saying nothing, which is good because we're trying to save them for another drive tonight. If they, if they move on now, and so we might not get to see them tonight on the night drive. So it's been asked to start with to start with them, to stay with them as long as we as we can. Hopefully they will hunt tonight and see if they can make a kill in front of us. That will absolutely phenomenal to. Uh, actually see the, uh, the kill and witness it. Stretch. Oops. Flat cat again. Very typical for the lions just to, to to lie on their backs, especially in the hard days because they need some cool breeze to cool them off. I 
also when they fall in, they also tend to lie on their back. That also aided, aided with the digestive system. There's so many different reasons why the lions tend to lie on their back when they're resting, or on the different different uh, different scenarios when they're mating. Also, after mating, you see the lions um, will lie on their back because that also aids with the uh, um, fertilization process. So it's for cooling, cooling off, um, aid of the digestive system, and also fertilization processes. And also for very, very comfortable lying in the back. So we'll be losing the light fairly shortly. Hardly um, read you have done it deep here, so you're breaking up quite badly here. Yeah. Ask you could get the, the history of the pride and the numbers because a lot of people just logging on now. If you could again explain that. History of the pride. Yeah, which pride it is and how many, and just some general information. A lot of people are willing to uh, to know the uh, the general history of, of the Strix Pride. And how many how many um, how many they are and the territorial movement and uh, and that kind of a thing. As I said earlier, the, the Strix Pride they've got a, a vast um, territory. Oh, the hyenas over there. Yeah. It's a very vast territory, and it, it's not. It's not enough. None of them in total, and it's just a one cup missing. So that has been missing for nearly two weeks now, or more. I'm not too sure for how long uh, that cup has been missing. I think that the territory or the radius of the of the, uh, the radius of the uh, of the sticks by territory um, it's Mala Mala and then the the western sector but not the whole of the western sector it's just a um, I think Exeter uh, Ottawa Singita and then uh, obviously up here in the northern part of the Sabi Sand Juma Game Reserve. Coro, that area. So they've got a very vast, uh, very vast territory here. Uh, the hyenas are moving off now. And in, in terms of food, and the, the special also on the, on the variety of of, um, of antelopes, and the 
kiddies. At one session, they were, yeah, they were seen on the, on the kiddie curl, on the buffalo curl, zebra, um, and uh, the, um, the Guineas, the wallabies. And they've got a very, very long history. And uh, I'll try and read through it, but apparently they're also related to, to, to the roller coaster pride down in the south and in Mapoche Mars, as I mentioned earlier, that uh, they were seen or found for a number of occasions um, with the Mapoche Mars. So they've got a very, very long history. And they're also known as a unsuccessful Midas, the, the, the sticks, lionesses. Apparently, they've lost many liters before, and uh, and we're hoping these cubs survive this time because they've always been uh, losing cubs, just dying of starvation, or getting killed by other male lions, but mainly from the starvation because they're not apparently they're not a very good hunters they said they're not a very very good mothers to say um, I read an article about them but I didn't read through the whole thing but, yeah, as I said then I'll try and, and, and read through the whole thing and then I'll be able to, to know the exact uh, back, background history of the strict part where they actually come from or where they were um, originated or, um, from and, and that kind of thing but apparently they're not a very, very good mother, so. So uh, these sticks now are still lying up at just in position, no change. There's uh, two vehicles uh, at the lock at the moment. The Anything for Mammon? Uh, somebody asked about the night drive. <coughs> so if you could. Um, well, Patrick, Patrick couldn't hear the radio. I hope you can hear me. But um, yes, we definitely go out on night drive. 7 o'clock tonight, Central African time. So that's about, I guess, 50 minutes from now. We're going to stay with the Lions a little longer. And then we're going to go back to a crew change. Uh, Mark will be presenting the night drive. Herman will be on camera. And I will be in final control. So, uh, yeah, stay with us. Hopefully there will be some uh, interesting lion activity tonight.
you get that question, Patrick? Is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a no. <laughs> there was a question uh, whether Sandy Patch is also a pride or whether there's just one lioness. And whether Sandy Patch and the Cup have been reunited. Oh. Is it here? I'm already. The message is not coming through in my earpiece. It's playing up badly yet. There was a question. Peter says, so much to know. You are coming to Kevin? Sandy Page is also the pride of just a, a one line. And you are also so tired in a good pile like that. Yeah, certainly the Sandy Page is also a pride. It's, it's more than one individual line. Line, yes, actually. Oh, see that? It's rubbing the head against each other, strengthening their bones. She's coming to say hello to us. She's really close. She's going to drink water. She's going to have a drink now. To add on to that uh, question of Sandy Patch, if, you, if it's a pride or just a single individual line, it's, uh, it's not a very big pride, obviously. It's, it's just consists of the mother and the, and the youngster, and that's it. So it's just the two individuals trying to, to form their own pride, which hopefully um, they will eventually form the bigger pride. I'm not sure if that, if that youngster is a male or female, so if it's a female, it would be nice because she, she will obviously stay with, with the mother. She'll keep the mother's company. So if it's a male, unfortunately, you know, obviously we'll have to go to separate ways at, at a certain age. But yeah, it is a pride. That's. People that call it the pride, but because it's just the two individuals, the mother and the youngster, but it's actually pride. As long as it's more than one animal in India, that, that's, that's what it's called a pride. Oh, I can't turn around any longer, I'm going to swing the light. Time to get up and move on. This is the limping female. It's 
going to drink water. All of them are getting up, yeah? This is right behind the vehicle. Comes the other one. It's going to drink water. That's the youngest cub in the pride. A little reflection in the water. It's beautiful. Isn't that stunning? Here comes the other one. All the lioness. So tennis for ready while I'm done a bit. How's that? Yeah, what a size. This is what we call the contagious behavior. Once one individual gets up and do something, the rest of the part will do the same thing. Especially with the lines. So if you once get up and scratch its claws against the tree just to sharpen the, sharpen the claws and the rest of the pride. Well, the rest of the individuals and then we'll, we'll go to the same tree and do the same thing. Very social case alliance. Just refilling with a hunt tonight.
sound up again? Did you get all that, Patrick? Yeah, I was trying just that thing. I was just popping out of me. Yeah. Okay, no, no. I'll, I'll, I'll quickly um, let's just make sure we have a picture somewhere. Okay, that one. Cool. Yeah, I've got the email. Okay, what? what um, Everybody, what, what, what we plan to do now is, uh, because as you could see, the lions are getting active. If we would go back to camp for half an hour now, we might uh, lose them. So, yeah, that's right. Um, so what, what's going to happen is, um, Herman is quickly also checking with Graham and with uh, Mark. Um, what we're probably going to do, once it is confirmed, is that they will come out here with the infrared camera. And then we're just going to drive away from the lions a little bit, so not to disturb them. Uh, mm -hmm. Switch the cameras. And then... Um, I think probably Patrick and Mark will uh, switch seats. I will stay on uh, on the camera and Herman will stay in final control. Uh, we're going to try something like that because yeah, if you lose them for half an hour now, then <coughs> we probably won't find them again. No, so we're, uh, going, uh, we're just going to try that, um, see if it works out. Um, Herman is trying to set it up on final control side. In the meantime, uh, we're going to stay with the Lions. It's great. It sounds like a plan. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. Can you quickly go show that again? Try and drive a little bit forward because these lines are getting active now. And we'll try and <coughs> stay with them as, as long as we can. Hopefully, until Mark gets here. Hopefully until Mark gets here because we need to switch the cameras. It's very bumped over here. Infrared spotlight as well, obviously. Us. Heads rubbing against each other again. That's how lines get to know each other. By rubbing the heads, and then they've got, they've got a very special lens on the noses, and the and again on the hand coaches that the, they use to um, to recognize each other. Especially like, like for instance, this missing um, line is cub. And if if it eventually um, finds the pride. I mean, there will be a lot of excitement as they've been missing here for quite a long period of time. And, but then how they'll how they'll be able to recognize hair is to actually smell hair all, all, all over their body. And, and because, as I said, they've got very special glands that, that the uh, 
that they used to to recognize each other. Same with the elephant. We've seen the elephant if they've been away from each other. That when they, especially the water courses, when they when they congregate in a large number, you see them putting the truck in um, into each other's mouth just to get to know each other. Lines are moving on. Stay with it. Another lying down again. I think I saw it lying somewhere in the workshop earlier today, but I'll double check. Uh, it's not in the vehicle, so it must be in the workshop or in the cabinet at the back or something like that. Station Lingala Mobile uh, West um, It's away from uh, Three Hours Dam uh, towards uh, Shibama Road at the moment. Oh, they look like they're on the road. Mind if you go ahead in it? Thanks for that. Uh, Mark Hammer, just also see if it's not on that table that's uh, standing in the workshop now. Or just under it, maybe. Right on the road. Is they moving in the same general direction of uh, where Saseko went in? Bless you, la. lion, lioness, was ever. This is beautiful. Time to hunt now. This is the perfect time for the lions to, to hunt. Because the temperature is nice and cool. And they can save, can save the energy as, as much as they want it. Five over here and there's three in front. So it, it will be a pity if they cross over Gauri Man to the south into Little Gauri. Something up ahead. I'm going to turn, right, the, I'm going to turn the lights off because they look, 
It looked like a little antelope. It's a little decker. Put the light off. Um, I'm just sorry about it because I don't want to interfere with the hunt. See, they're showing a huge interest in the little Daika antelope. And at if you copy here, there's a, a, a dry Daika um, just up ahead and uh, showing interest on it. So if the lions are hunting or stuck something and uh, we, we turn all the lights off, because we don't want to interfere with the hunt. So we put the lights on onto, uh, onto the prey species or to the lions. Or, and you're obviously interfering. So it has to be pitch black. And let them do their own business. What will happen when you blind the antelope, and then and that that will be a great opportunity for the lions to to be able to to catch the the prey species quite easier. And again, again if you put the lions onto the line, the prey species will see the lions and, and run away. So that is the interference. So none of these things should be avoided. Sounded like the antelope bolted. Had something running through these thick bushes here to a right. If we can put the headlights on and see. It was too small for the line. Small to sustain eight individual lines. The grey diker. That would that would have been a very quick snack for the adult lioness. The antler bolted on it. We did not copy mark. Um, they're heading west on the road that goes south of Treehouse Dam. To Shibama Road. Shibama Road. Myself going off the road into the fat bushes. So they'll probably pop out on Shibama Road shortly. Yeah, it's 
is very thick here. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to follow them through these thick bushes here. So what we'll do, just gonna just drive around and stand by on Shibama Road. Now this one's lying up here. We're just gonna stay here for, for some time. Looks like the, the limping line here, so it's, it's much better now. Oh, there we go, she's getting up again. Yes, I did. Heading down into the Donga erosion system here, yeah, just to a right here, west of uh, Three Hours Dam. So this road on the other side, just in, on the western side of the drainage town. So we're just going to quickly go around and stand by there. The half will pop out there in the next 10 minutes or so, or less, 10, less than 10 minutes, I will say. This is, a very, this is a very, very small block here. It's a, very, a question from Ellie um, regarding the sandy pitch. If uh, she was uh, isolated from reprise or she has always been uh, on her own. Ellie, um, I am not too sure about the, the background history of, uh, of sandy pitch if she was a part of the pride before and what actually happened why she's by herself in the in the cub and uh, maybe the the other um, members of the pride or individuals of pride died of the natural causes disease and, and uh, that kind of thing or the or the others have been killed by the by other proud of lions and then she, she managed to to escape and survived on her own. I am not too sure really but um, we had a, a um a single lioness in the Manulati Reserve as well and and she, but she was a part of the pride before and what happened and uh, it was two sisters and he herself, and uh, the other sister was caught in his um, in his knee, and the other one died of the natural causes, probably from a uh, uh, feline AIDS, that kind of thing. And she had cubs in the cubs, so it was also not a very, very successful mother. And uh, the, and she lost um, the first and the second uh, litters, uh, like in a very, very short space of time because she was not a very, very successful mother. And it was just very, very difficult um, to raise the cubs on her own. Very, very difficult. So, the pearl pop out somewhere. I'm just going to stand by over here. As if I draw a line across here, and it be somewhere here. Maybe just... And it, uh, I'm just thinking if you can possibly stand by where you are, I'm just gonna just drive around the corner or just drive uh, 50 or 60 meters or so and just stand by uh, to have to pop out somewhere just between us here. Yeah. And there's also a very well worn game path um, about 20 30 meters uh, behind you. Baby, wonderful. Must also check behind you that was they'll probably pop out behind you on that well one game path. So I'm just gonna stand by around the corner here. Look at there. It's very, very thick here. You can't drop the vehicle through here. 
Give me the Land Rover, which is the best. Um, oh, and there they are up ahead. There they are up ahead. They're fast. They are pretty fast. Yeah. See, this, I said 10 minutes or less, but yeah, this is about 5 minutes or so. And it, uh, yeah, just uh, just follow me and uh, I've, I've got them here again. Um, it's just crossing over Chibamu Road to the west. To go off here. Yeah, Mark, just keep, uh, just keep coming south on Chibaimu Road towards Gauri Man Road. So, these animals have just uh, um, crossed to the west um, on Chibaimu Road. Um, you'll probably see our, our vehicle last year in the block here, just west of uh, Chibaimu Road. Thanks. Okay. Oh dear, the picture break up over here. So we're just in the block here. Let's quickly speak to Mark. I just can't find it. Um, I think probably the best um, way to hand over is if, if you have all the stuff that we need, Mark, uh, bring it back, uh, bring it with you, and then on this vehicle, and then you switch positions with Patrick. Uh, and then, well, um, basically we keep following like we are, and as soon as there's a chance that there's uh, stationary for a bit, then we'll take that opportunity to switch the cameras. Go ahead. Go ahead, Annette. Annette, come in. Trying three here. Just lost the Virgil. lines at the moment. Okay. Got the lots reflection up there. Just in the long grass in the fixed stuff of here. So let's see if we can stick three of these thick bushes over here. Yeah go ahead on it. Understand, Mark. Uh, yeah, we'll just, just see uh, how we can meet up somewhere. Uh, but yeah, understand that you can't come in with a spotlight. 
Yes, at some point we'll come out of the block and maybe there's then a uh, meeting point. Mm -hmm. Annette, come in. Yes, you copy me. Yeah, I copy you now. Go ahead. So, in fact, I've left uh, this um, parking there, but where do you think they're going to pop out? Okay, they'll probably pop out on um, Zoe's Road, um, yeah, Junction with Philemon Scott Line. Yeah. Just wait for Mark. So copy Mark is there behind you. Yeah, I've got him over here. Um, thanks very much, Annette. Forward a bit. Yeah. Wait a second. It's a bit of a mission here. Yeah. Trying to follow his lines and tucking into the radio. Um, at the same time. Oh, sorry, chaining to your ass here. Yeah. Sorry? I'm just sorry chaining to your ass. What do you do now? Just switch the cameras and everything. Yeah, we have to switch the cameras. Yeah. I don't know, it's entirely up to you. And they're moving pretty fast, yeah? Um, yeah, Hamon, if you could swap to Gary, then we'll... Uh... Sorry, Mark? But you, you can, you, so you can give us the equipment, eh? then we can just switch it when, whenever we have a chance. Just in case we don't meet up again. Did they play water in this thing, eh? Um, Did they put water in the radio? Yeah, we're just gonna, let me just quick, quickly cut back to Gary, it's gonna be a bit, uh, well, here and there, and then uh, we'll be back with you soon. Uh, hello everybody, we're just going to quickly cut back to Kari while we uh, do some organizations here and then uh, we'll be back with you and hopefully with the Lions uh, very soon.